Hey Bass Geek here and today we're going to talk about how to gain confidence in new baits and techniques. Okay, so like I said, we're going to talk about how to gain confidence in new baits and new techniques. And I've heard this question asked to a lot of different people, and I've had it asked to me on several different occasions. And from what I've heard and what I've seen, uh, I don't really like the a lot of the answers. Uh, the common answer seems to be, by most people, take the bait, go out on the water, and just learn to fish it. Just beat water all day long until you gain confidence in the bait. And I think that's the completely wrong answer for one reason. If you're fishing that bait in the wrong area at the wrong time of year or at the wrong depth level, you're not going to gain confidence in that bait. You're actually not going to catch anything and you're actually going to do more to damage your confidence in that particular lure or that technique than you ever will to gain the confidence you need to fish it successfully. So when learning how to fish a new bait or a new technique, we're always going to do research before we hit the water. That's pretty much with anything you do in bass fishing nowadays. You always want to do your research, but you got to know the questions that you want to answer before you start looking for those answers. So the first question we're going to answer is a pretty simple question. It's water color. Now I would suggest learning a new bait or a new technique. Stick to a body of water you fished and you're comfortable with. Water color, really there's two major things we want to talk about. The water clarity and if the water's dirty, what kind of vibration we're going to need. So those are the two questions about the bait you're going to really answer. If you are going to fish dirtier water, most baits are made in an array of different colors nowadays. So you want to match the color to the water clarity. The second part is vibration. If you're fishing in dirtier water or maybe around grass or heavy brush, you're going to want a little bit of vibration. So the second question you're going to want an answer to is the depth level this bait is most effective at. So is it a top water? Is it a subsurface bait that runs two to three feet or shallower? Is it a bait that you can fish in the middle of the water column for suspending fish? Or is it a bottom hopping or a dragging bait that's going to be fished primarily on the bottom of the lake? So the answer to question two really leads us directly in to question number three. And that's the seasonal pattern of the bass. The bass are shallow in the spring, they're deep in the winter. They're shallow in the fall, they're deep in the summer. So that tells us where the bass are generally going to be, and that tells us when that bait or that technique may be more successful. If it's a deep diving crankbait, for example, probably the summer and the winter is going to be the best time to fish that bait. Uh, if it's a uh, shallow running crankbait, well, maybe in the spring or in the fall are going to be the best time to fish those. And our last question is going to be about the primary forage. So whatever body of water you're in, what's the bass's primary food source? Now, there may be multiple food sources, and they may key on those at different times of year. So again, question three leads directly into question four. What's the season? What's the forage? We need to know the answer to all four questions so we know when to fish this specific new technique or new bait and build our confidence level in that. So now we know the four questions we need to gain answers to. So let's start with research. Now, I generally take a three-step process to research, and the first step starts with, with this new bait or new technique. If it's a new bait, what I'll do is I'll go to the manufacturer's website. I'll see if the manufacturer has any videos or has any information 
that talks about how they suggest this bait be used. The second step is YouTube. There's always a, a lot of videos out there from guys like me who have used a lot of different baits and you can learn a few different uh, tips and tweaks of fishing a bait that may uh, help you get bit sooner and gain confidence in that bait sooner. So step three, it's just talking to some local guys, some guys that I know uh, I've fished with before, some guys who I know are a little more proficient with that bait or that technique and can give me some tips uh, on the technique or on that bait or and who can maybe answer the four questions that we talked about earlier. So now we hit the water. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even tie a new bait on unless I know all those questions, the four questions, the water color, the depth, the season, and the forage have all come together. If it's come together, that rod and that bait or that technique is lined up and it's ready to go as we go out the next day. If not, I won't even tie that bait on because I don't want to be tempted in using a bait that may not work. And it may, like I said, hurt my confidence uh, in using that bait over the long term. So when you're on the water and the opportunity presents itself and everything has came together like it should and you start to use that bait, it's as simple as making sure you learn the feel of that bait. Don't be frustrated if you miss a fish on it earlier. You're learning. Don't go out in the middle of a tournament and decide, I've never fished this bait. I'm going to do it now. That's the wrong time and wrong place to learn a new technique. Now, you if you're a co-angler, sometimes that does happen. And, uh, you know, it can pay off if your boater is uh, proficient at it. There's uh, step three in research, and you've got a guy who's catching fish who's obviously an expert at the technique and can help you out. But for the most part, you know, it's like any bait. It's like the first time you picked up your first Texas rig or whatever your confidence bait is, you know, there's a lot of things you're going to do. You're going to learn the feel of the bait. You're going to learn what a bite feels like on that bait. You're even going to hold it on the side of the water and work it back and forth just to kind of see what that bait looks like in the water. Now I'm going to give you two examples of baits I have confidence in. And the reason I have maybe more confidence in these two baits than a lot of other baits is because you can, they kind of span all four questions. Um, for example, the jig. A jig, you can fish it in muddy water, you can fish it in super clear water. It comes in a variety of colors. You can fish it with rattles. You can fish it with blades. Um, there's, you can fish it through a lot of different cover and around a lot of different structure. Question number two, you can fish it at a lot of different depth levels. You can swim it. You can drag it on the bottom. Heck, you can even with a vibrating jig, really wake it across the top. Question number three is seasonal. A jig catches fish year round. It's just what a jig does. Uh, you can fish it slow and deep in the winter, uh, slow and deep in the summer. You can stroke it. Uh, you can fish it fast, slow. You can fish big or small jigs. Um, it's just so versatile. And of course, reason or question number four, it can mimic bait fish or it can mimic crawfish. So it can mimic a lot of different forage based on the color and how you're fishing it. The second bait for me is going to be a hollow body swim bait or a soft solid body uh, like a Kitek sort of swim bait. Uh, and the reason why is again it, it answers all four questions. So I can fish it during the summer, I can fish it during the winter, I can fish it in muddy water, I can fish it in clear water, I can fish it at all the depth levels, including 
you know, suspended fish, and that's somewhere a, a, a hollow body can really shine for you is fishing for those suspended bass. Um, you can Texas rig it and fish it around grass and brush and structure. Um, you can fish it fast. You can fish it slow. You can fish it on the bottom. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with it. And that's, and, and the forage, I almost left that out. The forage, uh, it mimics a lot of different bait fish. So, you know, it covers all four questions, all four seasons, all the water color, and all the water levels. And that's why the swim bait is my one of my second favorite baits. So now I'm going to give you an example of a bait that I just gained confidence in this season, and that's the hair jig. So I've done my research on this bait. I've, you know, went out to the internet, uh, found a couple brands that I liked, uh, that a lot of other people liked, um, found several videos on uh, YouTube to learn uh, a couple of different presentations for this particular bait. Uh, and, and I answered the questions. You know, it's, it's best in, in deeper water. It's best um, in stained to clear water. It's best uh, during the summer, even though there are a lot of other applications for it. Uh, during other seasons. Uh, this particular technique uh, is best suited for deep water summer bass and it's best for bass that are chasing shad or gizzard shad or just large bait fish in particular schooling bait fish. And when I ran into that situation as I was fishing a swim bait I was getting some bites but not getting any fish that were uh, really taking the bait I decided to pick up the uh, the hair jig, throw it out there, went through a couple of dis different presentations that I had uh, seen and read about, and the first cast, guys, I caught a smallmouth, which you can see in one of my previous videos. Uh, a few trips later, found another school. Again, sort of the same thing was happening. Uh, started throwing that hair jig, and we started uh, catching fish. And I'm... I have a lot of confidence in that bait during that particular time of year when uh, when all those questions and that circumstance seems to come together, that's a bait that uh, I'll have out on my deck. Remember, always do your research. Be able to answer the questions. Water color, water depth, seasonal patterns, and what forage the bass are keying on that time of year. If you do that, guys, when you pick up new baits, you're going to gain a lot more confidence in a lot more baits, and you're going to be able to add a lot more techniques to your arsenal. So I hope all this made sense, and I hope it was easy to follow, uh, and I hope it helps you guys learn new baits and techniques. As always, any questions and comments in the comment section, I'll always get to those. My channel's growing a little bit, guys, so, um, you know, it may take me a little bit longer to get there, but I promise I'll get it. I'll answer every one and respond to every comment. Uh, as always, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and you guys rock.